Sometimes I really can't believe my luck, so a few weeks ago I decided to invest in a new router, a Draytech Vigor 2862. It was kind of an expensive router, I really did splash the cash on it, but it's more, more of a uh, small office, home office setup. But it gave me features that I didn't have under my old ISP router. Uh, but most importantly, updates. Draytech seemed to support their products for a significant amount of time. Compared to my ISP provided one, that was a Zyxel router, uh, no updates at all in the few years that I've had it. And that's kind of concerning me really because the router, well, broadband router is the device most under attack in your network. You've got all the attacks coming from over the internet and Wi-Fi. And what's protecting you? Well, a device that's never going to get updated. That's what it, that's what it is. That's all that's protecting you. And probably a device that was poorly made. Anyway, I happen to be looking through the logs at work, the intrusion detection system logs, and uh, lo and behold, what do we have? Draytech multiple product command injection attempt. I'm thinking, what? How? This, this can't be for real. I just bought this device and now it's under attack. Yeah, so this is a few screenshots from our intrusion detection system. This sits on our firewalls. This is a uh, Cisco Firepower. Snort, Sourcefire, whatever you might have known it under, because it's, it's been around for a while, this product. Anyway, this is just a screenshot of it. So although there's 80 attempts in the last six hours, I'm sure there's some uh, throttling going on here, so the numbers are probably quite a bit higher. And the attempts just come from all over the world. So these are obviously devices in a botnet. And I can see from the packets, it's probably only about two attackers here, leveraging devices from all around the world. There's a couple of different screenshots because there's two different rules that are protecting our systems. These are the two snort rules and uh, I'm not expecting anyone to understand. I have enough trouble with that myself. But anyway, we have a couple of reference numbers, CVE, or Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure reference numbers, which I'll look at in a moment. And we have the packets that are being received on our networks. They were post requests and these all seem very simple. So this is why I get the idea there's a couple of different attackers because uh, no matter which source there was, there were these, or this IP address here and this web address. I can't seem to get anything from either of them right now, but no doubt there was something there. So how bad is this CVE? Well, on a rating of zero to 10, 10 being the most critical, it is a 9.8. Oh! And we have a description, so Draytech Vigor 2960 and Vigor 300B. Uh, so yeah, that turns out not to be the device I have, but anyway, patches have been issued for my device. So devices allow remote code execution as root without authentication via shell meta characters to the CGI bin main function .cgi URI. This issue has been fixed. But those Draytech devices with the admin page exposed to the internet are completely vulnerable. Gain root access over the internet without a password. But from what I understand, it was actually disclosed to the vendor and they have released patches. So yeah, it's a bit of a write up here on skullarmy.net. The author was messing around with it, thinking they were only going to get as www data, which you know, be bad enough, but not too bad. But yeah, they actually got root. They could view the slash etc slash password file on the router. Well, hey, it's Linux based. If you search on Shodan for Draytech, you find 710,000 hosts. And for that particular model, you get 15,400. And some of the comments, yeah, apparently from Draytech, sure you are. I'm from the FBI, give me the. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Script kiddies trying their luck by the look of it. Looks like an example there of the URL, and that IFS separator was uh, what I saw on our intrusion detection system. Well, there's a write-up from Draytech. Users of effective models should upgrade to the 1.5.1 firmware or later as soon as possible. So to be fair to Draytech, they have done the write-up there, they've responded quickly. This is the reason why I went with Draytech, because they've got a security advisory page here. They're releasing the information about exploits they found in their products and releasing information of uh, applications that could be related. So as much as I've cursed my luck there, it's not the product I have, but uh, I'm presuming there was some sort of vulnerability because I did receive a firmware update at the same time all this came out. Their response seems good. I can imagine many other 
router companies would just sweep this under the carpet or not provide any notification that this has even happened. So shouldn't complain too much. Anyway, that was just a bit of an interim video because uh, my main focus for the next few days will be the Ubuntu 20.04 release. I need to take a look at all the derivatives, or as many as I'll uh, get to. Now, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.